Oh, I didn't see you there. Hi, I'm Sean. And today I'm gonna to show you how to service a Komatsu PC200 LC-8. You're gonna be doing a thousand hour service, so stick around. In the next couple episodes, we are going to follow Sean as he performs a thousand hour service on this PC200 LC-8. If you're only interested in specific maintenance items, we've created a shorter and more to the point versions of each task, which we'll link in the description. To easily and quickly book a mechanic, visit tecamohd.com. Welcome to Service Call, a mechanic's guide to service, troubleshooting, and repair. And on this episode, so I got a little handy hose here. We're just gonna stick on and direct the oil into this bucket. That's how you change a mother fuel filter. Do you wanna change that, what I said there? So just like any other filter, I've lubricated the seal with a little bit of oil. So what you're gonna see today is we're going to drain and refill the engine oil change the engine oil filter, change the primary and secondary fuel filters. We're going to change the primary and secondary air filters. Uh, we're going to change the hydraulic filters. And we're gonna drain and refill the uh, pump drive, swing gearbox, and final drives. And grease the whole machine. And one more thing that we're gonna be changing is This is a breather for the hydraulic tank cap. It doesn't come with a beard. This is part of the guaranteed maintenance plan that we have with this client. For more information, visit tecmohd.com. So for information on the filters that are in the filter kit for this particular machine, we'll put uh, a link in the description where you can purchase your filters. Because it is a wonderful sunny day, and I'm hanging out here with my two best buds, I prefer to use PR88 on my hands as opposed to gloves, just for a little bit of dexterity. Uh, PR88 protects from the potential hazards of, you know, putting your hands in fuel and oil and other, other uh, petroleum-based products. Sean has already removed the belly pan on the bottom of the machine. Be careful when you're removing these as they can be heavy and come crashing down from dirt buildup. All right, to start this off, we're going to do the swing gearbox, which is located, uh, well, the swing gearbox is located in front of the control valve uh, before the boom from the top. But the drain line runs underneath the control valve so it's accessible from uh, the rear of the machine here. So it's right here. It's a 22 millimeter or a 7 8 will also work. So I'm just gonna pull that plug, let that drain. I got an extra catch pan here because we got a little bit of a breeze so it's bound to make a bit of a mess. All right, so we're just gonna let that drain and then we'll move over here to the engine oil drain. So I got a little handy hose here. We're just gonna stick on and direct the oil into this bucket. And we just open this valve here and away we go. We'll check on it in a little bit. And in the meantime, we'll go and spin some filters off. So the engine oil filter is behind this here panel, which is the compartment for the uh, hydraulic pump. So, here's our engine oil filter. Just don't want to big, make a big mess, so I'm just gonna try and catch this as best I can. 
There we go, it's got to dribble a little bit. Sorry that I made it, you can't see. Why don't I maybe try and stuff one of my pans in there? Maybe that would be a better shot. Okay. And there's our engine oil filter. So I did make a little bit of a mess in there, not much, but I got a, one of these absorbent pads down inside there to catch it. All right, now that the oil filter is primed, we're gonna put it on right here. So just like any other filter, I've lubricated the seal with a little bit of oil. So as you can see here, if you wanna wipe it down clean, lubricate the seal, it's all upside down, but I'm sure you can figure it out. So then here, we're gonna turn it one full turn once it seats, once the seal seats, which it has right there, we're gonna turn it one full turn, if we can. All right, so there we go. And right here we have our primary fuel filter uh, or water separator. And it has a water and fuel sensor or a whiff sensor in the bottom of it. So we don't wanna wind the, the, the wire harness around the filter when we remove it. So we need to unplug it here. And now we can remove the filter. I got a little tray underneath to catch any fuel that we lose. Yeah, we're losing a little bit. Okay. And then we're probably gonna have to stick this in the vise because we need to remove this bowl. All right, so we have this we have this plastic uh, sediment bowl on the bottom here. We need to remove, and we gotta be very careful not to break it or crack it. There we go. What I've noticed on the new filter is that we do not have provisions to spin on this here sediment bowl. A lot of the time you just transfer from one, from one filter to the next after you clean it, obviously. Uh, this one here doesn't have that ability. However, we do need a water and fuel sensor and there's one right here attached to this housing here. Once we pull this plug here out, we'll be able to insert that water and fuel sensor. And we're gonna hang on to this sediment bowl uh, for future use. Parts can take weeks to come in, so it's a good idea to hold on to spares when you can for your client. This filter doesn't require the housing, but the next one might. Okay, so this filter does come with a new O-ring. And just like any other O-ring, may as well change it, you're there. Don't be lazy. So I just need to go grab a O-ring pick so that I can work this one here off. I'll be right back. All right, so we're just gonna remove this O-ring off the whiff sensor. Let's give it a little wipe. Now here's our new O-ring. Okay, and then uh, I think I'll just go grab a little bit of light oil to lubricate that, and then I'll insert it in the housing. A little more than what we needed, but it's all good. Like a glove. And there we are. So now I'm gonna prime the filter and install it. So here's our fuel filter primed. And when you're priming these, you wanna make sure 
that the fuel goes in these outside smaller holes because this is where the incoming fuel goes in and this larger center hole is where the fuel comes out. So if you're pouring fuel into the center, you're not filtering it. So make sure it's primed properly. And just like any other filter, we lubricated the seal. In this case, so I didn't use light oil. I just used a little bit of fuel from inside the filter and wiped it on the, on the uh, seal. So with our freshly installed water and fuel sensor, we can plug it in. Good to go. And that's how you change a mother fuel filter. Do you want to change that, what I said there? <laughs> And that's how you change a fuel filter on a PC200 LC-8. In the next episode, we'll be checking back on a swing gearbox and engine oil plugs. We'll be going up top to change a secondary fuel filter. Brandon with his hulking muscles must have over tightened this. Refilling the engine oil and more. I'm Sean and I fix And if you want to learn how to fix too, like, comment and subscribe. If you'd like any information in regards to filters that we've used, in our videos or lubricants, visit FortisHD.com.